I, I assume you're following the, all the Chip Kelly stuff. No. Yeah. <laughs> what what yeah. should we believe? What should we believe about all the stories coming from the Eagles camp about Chip Kelly and claims of racism? Well, th throw into the uh, mix that Chip Kelly came out today and said he wants uh, Bradford to, they want to have possession of Bradford beyond this season. And he has a, They want to extend uh, it. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I can go all sorts of ways with, with those. I'll just make a point on Bradford. That's not the main story, but it's a significant story that I would let him kind of find out what he could do. The guy's only yeah, played. Crazy he, to he's, me. It, it's since, it's, it's since 2013, he's less than 50% starts. He only started seven times last year. You know, his record for his career is like 18-31-1. and one. The guy was the number one overall draft choice. He was back when you were paying $54 million for yeah, the yeah, number $50 one draft million choice. Dollar signing bonus. Make him earn his neck check. Don't give him one. Yeah, I don't get it. Uh, in regard to the to the talk, and I don't know exactly how you put the question, but... <clears throat> what, 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 are you, what are we to believe? What should we believe well, about Well, here's what you should there. believe about him. He is a... This is going to sound strange. He's an introverted person. He's not a people person. Sounds strange. But, you know, I would think, and Jim Moore knows him a lot better than I do, and I've only talked to him once. So we're so far away from it. It's unfair to, for us to sit here and say, oh, well, he's a racist yeah. or he can't It's hard to tell what's people. going on. We're not there. Uh, he recruited African Americans at Oregon very successfully. You don't hear any of the organ players coming out saying they disliked him there, even yeah. the guys maybe he kicked off the team. Uh, you've had two rather prominent players talk about he has problems with uh, the culture of, I think he's, they're saying, of young African-American men. Here's what I think, and, and I'm pointed about this. Chip Kelly doesn't want Andy Reid's players. I think that's being lost in all of this. He wanted. He didn't win with Andy Reid's players. He's bringing in his own players, and he got rid of Nick Foles. I mean, he's getting rid of a lot of players yeah. of all colors. I think that. I think in general that pro football players deal with their assistant coaches. That should be who is important in their lives. I don't, you know, John Fox was foxy. He was, you know, all over the field, and he was friendly with everybody. Uh, I, and, and he related to his players in terms of, you know, going up and talking to them all the time. Chip Kelly is a different kind of guy. I he don't is. think that makes I, him a bad guy. I also think when you don't make playoffs and you lose, that players, as a coach once told me, to my face, in my face, when I said there was dissension on the team, and he said, son, there's dissension on all losing teams. Yeah. <laughs> and he was not laughing like I am now, And he, but he was right. Yeah. That, that's, but, well, the, that's the easiest story to find in sports. Go to a losing team and say, uh, how's this, how was this team you left? Yeah. My, my sense of this, and again, we're both being fair here, because it's hard to tell when you're not there. This is one of those stories where you, have to, be walking the, man, you so. have to be walking the hallways at the Eagles facility to really know what's going on there. Um, my sense is, this guy thinks out of the box. I'm with you. He wants his own players who fit into his system. He doesn't necessarily want Andy Reid's players anymore. And Chip Kelly just doesn't give a damn what other people think. He doesn't. He's doing things in a very unconventional manner. He doesn't care what the fans think. He doesn't care what the media thinks. He doesn't care what the players think. He wants to do it his way. And the players aren't used to dealing with a guy like this. So as they're exiting, they're foregoing the exit interview, and they're just lighting him up on Twitter and, 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 and Facebook and everything else. He doesn't need me to defend yeah. him, or I'm not here to defend him, but I'm telling reality here that... Andy Reid was a very personable coach. Chip Kelly's not a personable true, coach. True, true. So when you com make comparisons, you work for people and you went, boy, that's a good guy. And then you bring in somebody that's a hard ass, yeah. if you will, and you go, man, I don't like this guy like I did the other guy. Yeah. I mean, we Well, all it was like going that. from Mike Shanahan mm -hmm. to Josh McDaniels to John Fox. And those are three very different personalities, but the guy in the middle... He was tough. He was tough to get along with. Sure. Here's, here's the other thing. I don't, coach, I don't, I don't know that like a guy, 
I don't know that a guy who's an actual racist could actually coach on the college or NFL level these days. I mean, that just wouldn't play. It just would not play with I, I, anybody. I, I, he'd be found out quickly, he'd be run out of the game, and he'd probably never coach again. I would say this. How, how, much, well, how much of this is players who are just pissed off about getting traded or cut? Well, how many players, though, have you heard in the offseason rip, rip their form, former coach? So here's what I think, and I, uh, I addressed this in another place uh, yesterday, that the front office needs to come out and address it. Yes. They need to at least, I, I'm not saying Because there's they, a little too much smoke here. To at least meet with some leaders on that team. Yeah. Meet with Chip Kelly and say, we don't need this yeah. going into the season. Tamp this down some. No, or yeah. find out, you know, Chip, uh, really, I mean. What's going on Is it because here? what I, what you get even from a leader that's on that team is that Chip doesn't want swagger. You know, that is, you've got to in today's society, you have in to today's it. coach, you have to say earrings are okay. Yeah. Or having a, having a different personality or being different, being a Des Bryant or type Or celebrating of in the end zone. Or, yeah. you know. or, as I said, wearing an earring or yeah. having swagger or maybe being into social media more or something like that. You have to adjust with the times. And maybe Chip Kelly can be all the things he is, but he also, I think, has to kind of broaden his scope because he was a college coach. One of the reasons why college coaches, he has to prove he's going to be successful on the pro. Most college coaches don't succeed in the NFL. Think of the guy with the Tampa Bay Bucks a couple of years ago that was with Boston College. You know, the guy uh, that, that yeah. down there yeah, and yeah. had his players attacking on a kneel down, and he was gone in two years. Yep. You can go back to Lou Holtz. You can go back to so many different uh, – Steve Burrier. He was a total failure in the NFL. College coaches have a problem, I think, not only adjusting to the pro game, but adjusting to the pro players. That segment brought to you by John Elway Chevrolet, Colorado's number one Chevy dealer.